You're better on the regular computer. Okay. All right, thank uh, you. Before you get started, uh, did, the two two things real quick, sir. Uh, number one, did you hear everything Mr. Remy said? Yes, I have, Your Honor. I heard everything. Yes. Okay. Uh, number two, uh, Mr. Remy, you mentioned that uh, uh, Mr. Christopher is on probation, correct? Um, I can't recall if I did, but I do believe he is on probation. He did plead in Camden County, but I believe that relates to a disorderly person's offense. Um, right. The sentence was imposed fairly recently. Yes. Yeah, so at the time of the offense, he was not on probation because uh, I think because I have uh, the sentence in the CCH from January 22, 2020, one year probation for a CDS charge. And the uh, actions here are alleged to have occurred last summer on July 14th. That's correct. Does that the sound matter, right to you? That, that is correct, Judge. The matter has been referred to grand jury. Um, but there are no grand juries operating at this moment. Right. But, um, but the, the point, the point being that, that at the time of the offense, he at the time of the offense, he was not on probation. He's on probation now since the offense. That would be accurate, Judge. Uh, Any okay. incarcerated on the fugitive matter at this point. Okay. All right. Very good, Mr. John. Now that we we're ready to hear what you have to say, sir, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. We've had the opportunity to review the affidavit of probable cause. I know uh, my client, Mr. Christopher, uh, wanted to talk about the case. I I'll just say on his behalf, Your Honor, that um, I've spoken to Mr. Christopher uh, yesterday. Uh, we went over the case uh, pretty thoroughly. He does maintain his innocence in regards to these charges. I we're not going to contest probable cause for today's hearing, um, understanding the low threshold. But just so Mr. Christopher is aware, um, he does maintain his innocence in regards to these charges, um, and I, I, I imagine that's his position. And um, certainly, we obviously will be looking at this case uh, further, Your Honor. I know Mr. Remy made a reference to possible second-degree charges, um, and I, he did talk to me briefly yesterday during a uh, conference. Uh, Your Honor, I would just ask, uh, at least for today's purposes, that since the charges are in the third-degree range, um, that, that at least for today's purposes, just to um, when reviewing the PSA, just for the charges as they are in the third and fourth degree ranges. Um, I think that's re I think that's I think that's reasonable, and I'm 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 not going to consider that there might be second degree charges. Um, I'll consider only what's before me in evidence, which is that these are third and fourth degree charges. Go ahead, Mr. John. And thank you, Your Honor. Um, the scores from Mr. Walston, I. Just in my opinion, looking at this, are a little bit on the elevated side. There are uh, six in the uh, six. Uh, he's not on pretrial monitoring. Um, he was just placed on probation, Your Honor. I'm looking at the PSA, and it looks like he was actually just placed on probation for uh, a disorderly person's offense of uh, possession of marijuana on um, January of this year, Your Honor. So he was just put on probation. He was not. I don't think believe he was on probation at the time of these offenses. Um, let me just look at the PSC one more time. I don't think no, I don't probation. think he was either. That's what we were talking about. Right. Um, so he wasn't on probation. Um, we do recognize he did, all his current charges, um, including the matters out of Pennsylvania, do appear to be disorderly persons level uh, offenses. Uh, indictable history is not significant. Um, he has three indictable offenses. Uh, Third degree conspiracy, uh, all theft related offenses from um, the mid 2010. Um, very little violent history, only one violent conviction for a simple assault. Um, also, further, Your Honor, um, this violent criminal activity flag has not been raised. Um, I, I have to argue, Your Honor, um, that it is not, at least in the traditional sense, not a violent offense. Um, Although the case, certainly any fraud, theft offenses do involve victims, Your Honor, I would note that these allegations here um, don't involve any actual physical contact with victims. So a lot of times, Your Honor, when we see like a shoplifting or theft, even if it's not violent, it involves a contact with a person. Here, this does not involve, at least to my knowledge, any direct contact with individuals. It involves contact, looks like, with um, banks or ATM machines, Your Honor, but does involve direct contact with individuals. So that sense, Your Honor, I it would be categorized as a nonviolent theft offense, Your Honor. We would ask that Mr. Ralston be released on pretrial monitoring level three. Uh, we were asking him to take into consideration these personal characteristics of Mr. Ralston. Um, he is gainfully employed. Uh, currently, he's involved with cutting down trees, um, doing home remodeling, and he's been doing that for the past three months. 
in addition, Yonder, um, he does currently live with his um, girlfriend as well as, um, my understanding, the uh, two children who live with him as well. They are both four and um, one years old. And um, so he's been living the, the address uh, for a period of, for, um, in addition, he's also living with his mother, um, actually, correction, I'm sorry, girlfriend's mother, and he's been living in the address listed in the complaint at the 28 Tower Lane in Willembrook for the past uh, two years. So despite the high scores, um, and he has some pending disorderly persons level charges, uh, we would strongly ask you to consider release on pretrial monitor level three to ensure uh, the following factors. We want to ensure that uh, Mr. Ralston would appear in court, um, would ensure that he would not obstruct justice. Uh, and most importantly, I think James can be maintained in the community. This is not a, a, a person that really is, is a threat in the violent sense, Your Honor. And uh, I think given all the uh, restrictions that are going on in, in this world, Your Honor, it's very unlikely Mr. Ralston. Um, Christopher would, um, would be out in the community. Um, so we would ask for uh, PML3, e even perhaps a, a PML3 plus, if you are finds appropriate. Um, you know, I don't think PML3 plus would even be that all, that much different from all the restrictions we have right now. But I, I think all that could actually show that Mr. Christopher can be maintained in the community. And, and for that, Your Honor, we submit. Thank you. Mr. Uh, prosecutor, any response? Yes, Your Honor. Now, the defendant may disagree with his prior record, but it is his prior record. The defense counsel may state, well, the scores seem a little elevated, but they, they were elevated because of his record of failing to appear, and not just in this state, but other states requiring the um, the interstate compact on fugitives to be... Uh, it's clear from his history that he will not appear for court when required, that he will obstruct the process. Um, counsel posits, well, in light of what's going on, it's, you know, he won't be in the community but well, we see an individual who can't abide by conditions in a normal sense. There is no assurance that, uh, based on his record, that he will comply with conditions. We understand that he will, He, you know, at, at, at the conclusion of, um, essentially, of, of, of this matter, that he would be transported to the Commonwealth. There, there's a whole other slew of circumstances that occur. Council posits, well, this isn't a threat in the violent sense. Well, the initial interaction with the police could have very well turned violent, but I'm not asking the court to, to rely on speculation, but rather the defendant is a threat to, um, to the property of others um, and to their accounts, especially as counsel deposits that we are in a different time right now and that money is indeed a concern, especially for the everyday citizen. But in its totality, Judge, um, Your Honor, based on the record, the public safety assessment, the criminal history, this defendant will not appear for when required. There's no condition this court can craft that would abate that condition. There's no condition this court would cra could craft that would abate the fact that he does have a history of obstructing the judicial process in the fact that he will leave the state and commit similar offenses, um, as we see from the three prior fugitive laws. Uh, therefore, the court is left with no other alternative but to detain him in this instance. Uh, with that, I would just rest upon uh, the record and the exhibits that have been created. All right. Any final words, Mr. John? Uh, Your Honor, again, we rely on the argument we did place on the record, Your Honor, for Mr. Uh, Christopher. And just um, really emphasize the fact that he's not on pretrial monitoring, uh, was just placed on probation for disorderly persons level offenses. I do recognize he has to deal with the Pennsylvania charges, but you know that's something that Mr. Christopher is aware he has to deal with. But um, I think in light of the circumstances, weighing the public safety assessment um, and overall weighing the personal characteristics of Mr. Christopher, we do submit that pre-child monitor level three is uh, appropriate and um, you know just ask that he be released if he has to deal with the PA matters once the PA matters is uh, dealt with. Um, you have to deal with these charges as well, and, and he can be maintained on pre-trial monitor level three. So for that, and I think just um, in summary that he does have the very strong community ties, um, as no, he's been living in Willenville for the past few years. Um, he has a substantial family there and um, work as well. And uh, for that, we submit. Thank you. 
All right, thank you, gentlemen. This is the pretrial detention motion for Mr. Ralston D. Christopher. The state has filed a motion for his pretrial detention, and we just had the hearing. First of all, the court finds that the state has established probable cause that the defendant uh, committed these offenses. That's based on exhibits S2 and S3. Particularly S3 is a very thorough and detailed uh, supplemental report, it is called, um, which includes photographs, which includes uh, specific information, and paints a very disturbing uh, 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 synopsis of what occurred here with um, uh, a whole scheme uh, designed to steal money out of uh, people's uh, pockets electronically uh, involving uh, more than this uh, defendant. Um, so certainly there is absolutely a well-grounded suspicion that these offenses have occurred. Uh, this exhibit uh, report is uh, almost uh, brings it to the point where the case could be trial ready. Um, so it's uh, more than what is needed to establish probable cause. Uh, separate and apart from that, probable cause is not contested by the defendant for purposes, for, for purposes of this hearing only, maintaining uh, the presumption of innocence and also not to have the stipulation used in any subsequent proceeding involving this uh, defendant. The court also finds by clear and convincing evidence that there is no amount of uh, monetary bail, non-monetary conditions, or combination of bail and conditions that would reasonably assure this defendant's appearance in court when required and or the protection of the safety of any other person or the community and or that the person, the defendant, would not obstruct or attempt to obstruct the criminal justice process. The court is particularly concerned with the protection of the safety of any other person or the community and will therefore order a pretrial detention. The court finds the state has satisfied its burden by clear and convincing evidence the evidence favoring pretrial detention here in this case is so clear, direct, and weighted and convincing as to enable the court to come to a clear conviction without hesitancy as to the truth of the matters asserted. Uh, the court makes that determination for a number of reasons. Those reasons include the nature and circumstances of the offenses charged, uh, charged with forgery, credit card theft, and possession of a scanner. So again, it appears to be a, uh, a scheme. Uh, this defendant was part of a group who um, tried to present forged checks and also stolen credit cards at the bank. Uh, and they also had a credit card reader um, uh, to, to do that. Uh, again, taking money electronically out of people's uh, pockets. Very disturbing uh, uh, allegations. The way the evidence against this defendant, considering the admissibility of any evidence sought to be excluded, appears to be uh, strong here. That includes a personal observation of the law enforcement officers who investigated. Uh, includes statements of witnesses, including uh, bank employees. Statements of the defendant to police. There's also body camera video, dash camera, uh, bank uh, um, surveillance uh, uh, cameras. There's physical evidence in here, including uh, bank records, uh, forged checks, stolen credit cards, credit card reader, bank receipts, and uh, also um, marijuana was found. That's one of the charges. The history, history and characteristics of this defendant is concerning. We heard he doesn't have a significant record. He does have a significant record. He's 28 years old. Uh, he appears to be on his way to being a full a career criminal. Uh, he has 18 prior New Jersey and Pennsylvania arrests. That's a lot in 10 years as an adult. Uh, and he also, uh, separate and apart, appears to have a chronic unabated substance abuse issues. The criminal history is in the uh, public safety assessment and S5. He also has a very poor record concerning appearances uh, at court proceeding. The main concern here is that the, uh, the court is worried about the uh, nature and seriousness of the danger to any other person or the community that would be posed by his release. The court specifically finds that he is a danger to continue to steal, defraud, and cheat from anyone he can. Um, and separate, uh, there's a, a, a lesser concern, but still a concern that the, of the na for the nature and seriousness of the risk of obstructing or attempting to obstruct the criminal justice process that would be posed by his release. That includes the potential for witness intimidation of co-defendants. And also, based on prior convictions, separately for resisting, for obstructing, and for hindering. Um, so he is a risk to obstruct the criminal justice process. Uh, the release recommendation of the pretrial services program obtained using a risk assessment instrument as that release is not recommended, and he does have the maximum scores of six and six. As he stands before the court, uh, this defendant is currently on probation, but that's only since January 22nd. Um, he has seven pending charges from three different court dates. 
Uh, Mr. Christopher, please don't uh, interrupt. Uh, I asked you uh, not to do that before. I'm asking you not to do that again. And I, I won't ask you again, sir. Please don't interrupt. He has seven pending charges from three different dates. Uh, those dates are uh, from uh, 2016, 2017, and 2018. So he has old charges that are pending, seven pending charges, three different dates. Um, and that includes um, for uh, resisting, obstructing, and for hindering, I'm sorry, the, let's strike that. The pending charges are resisting, obstructing, drugs, theft, and forgery. Uh, so those are pending. Those haven't come up yet. Uh, yet he still has a six and six on the public safety assessment. Ten disorderly person convictions, including four for uh, CDS, three for resisting, obstructing, and hindering, three separate ones, uh, two for shoplifting, and one for assault. He has three indictable convictions for conspiracy, third degree, uh, also shoplifting, I'm sorry, conspiracy, third degree shoplifting, and theft. And a, an enormous number of failures to appear, uh, 26 um, since 2010. Um, and three are recent. So we hear where he's lived at uh, Tower Lane in Willingboro since uh, for two years, yet living in Willingboro, he didn't go to Willingboro Court on uh, March 5th, excuse me, April 5th, 2019. He didn't go to Oakland Court on January 18th, 2019. And he didn't go to uh, Gloucester Township Court in Camden County on May 2nd, 2019. So despite, despite being a local guy, he, he manages not to go to court. Um, 26 total failures to appear, uh, and he currently has fugitive warrants from Pennsylvania. So basically, he just does things and then tries to avoid the uh, consequences. And really, none of his arrests, charges, convictions, jail sentences, or probation have deterred him from continuing continued criminal activity. Uh, the court will therefore uh, order uh, find the state as met his burden, order his pretrial detention, uh, direct that he be afforded a reasonable opportunity for private consultation with counsel, and sir, you have a right to appeal this order within seven days. Return to court rule two colon nine dash thirteen. Let's go back to the PIP date. We were talking either April 15th or May 27th. Any support that people uh, uh, have a, uh, a better picture of when the PIP date is? Judge, it's right now scheduled for April 15th. Okay, I'll uh, change the order accordingly. And that's good to have the PIP date moved up. I appreciate it, April 15th at 9 a.m. Thank you. All right, good luck to you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. That concludes the hearings for this morning.